Let's go to work. In the book of St. Mark, chapter 7. Follow me in your Bible. St. Mark, chapter 7, and we'll start reading in verse 5. All right. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? <laughs> There's so much tradition in church. Now, men have made tradition doctrine. Let me explain what doctrine is. Doctrine is written. Doctrine is the rules and regulations that God himself set forth, gave his apostles, and the apostles taught it to the church. The doctrine of God have no flexibility. The doctrine of God will not change, and the doctrine of God cannot be altered. A church can set rules, but the rules cannot contradict doctrine. What do you mean, Pastor Janice? Church may set a rule that service is going to start a particular time. Okay, service is going to start 11 o'clock Sunday morning. Fine. Another uh, church said, okay, we're going to start at 9 o'clock in the morning. That have nothing to do with doctrine. Because you can wish up God any day, all day, every day. But when you say doctrine, that means these are things that are set forth by the Lord of heaven and earth to govern our lives by so we can be eternally saved. Now do you get what I'm telling you? Listen. Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? What was the elders' tradition? But eat bread with unwashing hands. Eat bread without washing their hands. All right. He answered and said unto them, Well. Well. Hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. What did Jesus call them? Hypocrites. So don't get on me when I call names. <laughs> a hypocrite is a faker. Yeah. And this is what we have all around the world. Hypocrisy that blankets church. Jesus said what? Well, as his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. What did he say? As it is written. As it is written. This people honor me with their lips. people honor me with talk. A bunch of mouth service. But their heart. But their heart. Is far from me. Far. Far from me. Why do you think the churches are in the predicament that they're in? Because the heart of the church goer is far from God and the church goer heart is in the hands of bishop. What do you mean? Anytime a man can come in your church and tell you that when he count to three, speak in tongue. Amen. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Any man that can count to three Three and got you speaking in tongue, you're full of the devil. Right. Because the Holy Ghost is a gift from God. Right. And the Bible says they speak in other tongues as the Spirit give utterance. And the Spirit is God. And no man can control the God that's in you. That's right. So when a preacher, I don't care who he is, can tell you, or oh, the Lord spoke to me, the Lord going pass by, when I count to three, he tell him about shot, tell him about my shot, blah, 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 Peter, pack a pick of pepper. When I count to three, the Holy Ghost going to fall. One, two, three, and you get all these people. How many, like in an auction, how many, 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 everybody yelling for how many grits? How many, how many? Now, because we are ignorant of scripture, we call that the move of the Holy Ghost. But the scripture said the Holy Ghost do not behave itself unseemly, meaning God himself don't conduct himself in a manner that violates his own book. God ain't going to tell me to believe the book and then he do something contrary to the book he asked me to believe. Scripture says, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. For they are they which do testify of me. So when Benny Hinn blow his bad breath and 20,000 fall out. You see, you can't convince me that anything is of God. I believe what's written. 
Bible says whatsoever things are written aforetime and written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So our hope is in the scriptures, our belief is in the scriptures, our teaching must be in the scriptures, our entire life must evolve around the scriptures. What is that? This people honors me with their lips. Lip service. Lips. Honor with the lips. With the the lips. Apostle Paul taught the same thing to Titus. He said they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. Deny. Because you see religious people on corners giving out tracts, arguing with people, people going to church with Bibles under their arm. That don't prove you know God, nor does it prove you are serving God. Are you getting what I'm telling you? This people honor me with their lips. This people honor me with their what? With their lips. With their lips. But their heart. They, that's what God wants. Heart. The thing that God wants is the thing that people don't give them. That's right. That's right. With what? But their heart is far from me. And as a result, what's the effect? Howbeit in vain. Glory to God. Do they worship me? How? In vain. Do they worship me? What do they do? Teaching for doctrine. They teach for doctrine the commandments of men. Are right, you listening to the old man? Amen. They teach for doctrine. For doctrine. They say that God said this, and God said this, and God said the other. And out of ignorance, we jump up at Bishop. Who praise him, praise him. Riding around church and bishop like he's so anointing coming out the pulpit sitting on your lap. It ain't no man supposed to be on the lap of no man or no woman and you supposed to be in the spirit? That's right. Talk back to me. Amen. The Holy Ghost do not move no man to do what Jesus or his apostles did not do. Because in order to back up what you done, you got to run to God's everlasting word. And if this don't back up your doing and your talk, then sit down. There got to be order and rules in God's church. If a church don't have no rules, then everybody in that church is lost. Lost. God and you go to churches, there's no rules. You party and say you're saved. You shoot pool and say you're saved. You go to proms half naked and say you're saved. You smoke and say you're saved. You shoot dice and why you shooting? You just saying, please be patient with me. The Lord ain't, ain't through with me yet. That's right. And yet you say you're saved. You live together, not married, and you say you're saved. You got your second wife and your first wife is living, and yet you say you saved. That's right. You got your third husband and your first husband's living, and yet you say you saved. So all this religious trash have taken over in the church. Now, if you have a person who's been used to living in dirt and filth all their life, when somebody come along and tell them you need to clean up, being clean is unusual to them. So they will look at you like, man, what you talking about? Cleaning up? I've been living like this all my life. That's the way it is when we have been doctrinized, taught so much stuff. Listen, I came out of an apostolic faith church. They had the basics, baptism, Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ was God, but they couldn't break it down. They couldn't break down at all. I had a Sunni Muslim went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ two weeks ago, and he came to me after service. He said, I've been, I'm a Muslim. I've been a Muslim all my life. He said, I never understood how people would say Jesus Christ is God. He said, but after I heard you break it down, 
And you said there's a separate in nature between the human and the divine. He said, I always thought that Mary's baby was God until you said the baby was the body and God was in that body. He said, now I understand and I'm ready to be holy. What tradition have you learned in church? What traditions did you shout to, sing to, got happy over in church? It is a tradition of the bishop to get up and speak and put a title on his sermon. He say anything. I use for a text, shoo shoo baby. Ain't that's what they do? Amen. Next week or the next day, another text. I want to use for a text, big leg, little leg. <laughs> that's something stupid. Yeah. Something ain't got nothing to do with my soul getting right. Amen. Jesus said, how be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching. But wait a minute. They go in the church. In vain do they worship me. They on the choir and they singing and they ushering. In vain do they worship me. What are they teaching? Teaching four doctrines, the commandments of men. All right, Detroit, let's have a family discussion tonight. Amen. Let's evaluate tradition of men that have came in church, teachings that we thought was scriptural for years. Amen. You've been taught there was five minor prophets and five major, weren't you? You ever heard that teaching? The Bible never said that the prophets was minor or major. The Bible just says he speak by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. We've been taught That Paul died at Nero's chopping block. How Paul died have never been in the Bible. Amen. I want this to be good in case I got any undercover preachers blending in out there. <laughs> We've been taught that there were only 12 apostles and then some of the preachers have taught that there was no more than 14 in the Bible. You miscount it. Miscount it. Let's get the first one. Give me the book of Hebrew. First in Hebrews chapter 3. Go right here, God. Follow me. Follow me in your Bible. We're going to Bible school tonight. Tonight. All right. Hebrews chapter 3, and we're starting in verse 1. All right. Wherefore, holy brethren. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers, partakers of the heavenly calling. Who are we going to think about? Consider the apostle. Who? The apostle. Who? The apostle. And what? And high priest of our profession. Tell me that. Tell me his name. Christ Jesus. That's number one. Number one. When God manifests himself in the flesh, he chose 12 men. And those 12 men, preachers say he chose 12 apostles. No. Focus on the language of what you're saying. When you say he chose 12 apostles, that's saying there was apostles already when he selected them. He chose 12 men and then taught them and then made them apostles. Amen. Jesus won. One. He chose 12. One plus 12 is how many? 13. I believe we all went to school. Amen. One plus 12 is how many? 13. All right. Judas was one of those apostles. Well, Judas died. Yes. He commit treason. Sold for 30 pieces of silver, sold out on Jesus. Right. In the first chapter of the book of Matthew, mm -hmm. their apostles got together. And at this time, the Lord didn't need two. Right. He just needed one more. That's right. All right, follow me in your Bible. Now in the book of Acts, chapter 1, and we'll start reading in verse 16. Remember, Jesus won the 12. 13. 13. 1 plus 12 is 13. Judas backslide. He dies. He hang himself. 
his, ga- his, his bowels gushed out, but uh, someone got to take his place. That's right. That the word may be fulfilled, let one die and another take his office. Right. All right. Acts chapter 1 and read verse 16. Solomon. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled. And what? Which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. Yes. For he was numbered with us. Oh, yes. Yes, he was. He was numbered with us. He was numbered with us. And had obtained part of this ministry. Hey, wait a minute. I, I, love, I, don't, I don't like just reading. I love to break it down. Right. Right. Notice the Bible didn't say he had fooled. Part of the ministry. And had obtained part. Only part. Of this ministry. Because there were some things about the ministry he didn't have. That's right. Well, what was that, Pastor Jennings? He didn't go into all the world. The apostles didn't go into all the world until Jesus died. That's right. That's right. And come on back the third day, then there was commission to go into all the world. That's right. Otherwise, in that, the apostles just went into certain regions. Mm-hmm. Nor did the apostles have the Holy Ghost in them at the time Jesus was walking. Right. Because they didn't need it. Because while Jesus was here, he kept them. He kept them. Glory to God. All right. For he was numbered with us. He was just numbered with us. And had obtained part of this ministry. Part of the ministry. And this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Yes. Falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst. Uh-huh. And all his bowels gushed out. Yeah. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And so much as that field is called in their proper tongue, El Sedema. All right. That is to say, the field of blood. Now at verse 20. All right. What is written in the book of Psalms. It is written in the book at Look at him, referring to scripture. It is written. It's written. In the book of Psalms. That's what I love to do, refer to scripture so folk don't think I'm making up nothing. That's right. It's written in the book of Psalms. Let his habitation be desolate. And? and let no man dwell therein. What else? And his bishop let bishopric another take. Let another take. Wherefore, of these men. Of these men. Which have companied with us. That company with us. All the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. That right there let you know that the twelve was not the only ones that Jesus was teaching. That's right. That's right. There were some men in the company with the apostles. All the time. How often was they around? All the time. Amen. How often was they around? All the time. What? what? That the Lord Jesus went in and, and yeah, out among us. Yeah, had some other men that was witnessing Jesus coming in and out among the apostles, getting the knowledge just like them. Beginning. Be- well, beginning when? From the baptism of John. They start hanging around, around the time of John's baptism. Unto that same until day. Until the same day. That they he was, was around until he us. was taken up from us. Must one be, or, must one. Wait a minute. Must what? Must one be ordained. Must one be ordained. To be a witness with us of his resurrection. Uh-huh. And they appointed too. Joseph. Now, the apostles appointed two, but two wasn't needed at this time. That's right. Joseph. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabas. Joseph is called Barsabas. Who was surnamed Justice. Yes. And Matthias. And Matthias. And they prayed. There you go. See, the apostles select two. Two. But they relied on God right. to select that one. And they prayed. They did what? And they prayed. They prayed and said, and said, Thou Lord, Thou Lord, which knowest the hearts said, of all God men, didn't know the hearts of everybody. Show whether of these two. You show us. Amen. You show us. Whether of these two. Which one out of these two? Thou has chosen. Amen. Amen. No, Peter chose him. Thou has chosen. No, the other apostles chosen. Thou has chosen. Give me someone whom the Lord selected. That's right. Thou hast chosen that he may take he part, may of, take this part of this and ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell. Then what? That he might go to his own place. Yes. And they gave forth their lot. They gave forth their lot. And the lot, and fell, the lot upon fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. All right, think of it. Jesus won. He had 12. That's 13. Judas died. But now you got another one, Matthias. Matthias. That's 14. It doesn't matter because Judas died. He still was once an apostle. That's right. Jesus won. Jesus select 12 men, made them apostles. That's 13. Matthias, 14. 14. Well, now you got two more. Two more. Acts chapter 14. I had one man write me and say, it ain't no way in the Bible that Barnabas was an apostle. My Lord. He was just a helper. It's not. 
Mm. Give me Acts 14, 14. Acts chapter 14 and verse 14. What is it? Which when the apostles. Spell it. A-P-O-S-T-L-E-S. -E Plural. Who were they? Barnabas. Who? Barnabas. And who else? And Paul. Right. Amen. Amen. 14. And who was the missionary? Barnabas. 15. And Paul. 16. Are you listening? Amen. I want to soak you a little. Amen. Go back to our calculator and count. That's right. We've been taught that in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. when the widows were neglecting their daily administration, administration, that the apostles chose seven deacons to handle that business. Right. Have you been taught that? They lied. The Bible didn't even say they were deacons. No. Glory to God. Follow me in your Bible, and I'm going to tell you what the Bible point out they were. Now in the book of Acts chapter 6. Follow me. And we're starting at verse 1. We want to undo all the bad teaching that's been done because a lot of teaching is what I call hand-me-down teaching. What do you mean? Well, I come from a house of eight. Five brothers and three sisters. Well, my brother outgrows something and hand it down to the other brother. Hand it down to me, hand it down to the other. That's the way a lot of bishops have done. They have taught what they learned from another bishop, who have taught what he learned from another bishop. And what these old bishops are doing now is teaching the same hand me down teaching to another young generation. And that whole young generation now, they're going teaching the same thing they got from Bishop because you bear witness in most churches, you are not allowed to ask Bishop no questions. If he preached something, Bishop, you preach such and such and such a thing, but the Bible says, don't, don't, don't you question God. Well, wait a minute, I'm questioning you, Bishop. You ain't God. I'm questioning you. You ain't God. Amen. And some of them go as far as lying and say, the Bible say don't question God. The Bible ain't never say that. The Bible said God know all things. I can ask him whatever I want. Are you getting what I'm telling you? All right, let's get the deacon straight. Acts chapter 6, and we're starting at verse 1. I want you to follow me in your scripture. Follow me. All right? And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied. Now, a disciple and a believer, two different things. A disciple and a believer are two different things. I... There's millions of believers who do not follow right. what they believe. Right. 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 I got thousands of people that write me all the time. Pastor Jennings, I believe everything you preach is the truth. And they say, I'm not ready to follow it yet. Amen. Now, because you got a lot of people going to church, a lot of people are believers, but you don't have many disciples. All right, listen. Amen. Listen. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, what happened? there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Yes. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. And then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them. Yes. And said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. What else? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men. This is where the apostolics, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholic, the Pentecostal, the non-denominational, they said, this scriptures let us know we're supposed to have at least seven deacons in the church. Where do you get this foolish teaching from? Where did this come from? This is what happened when you sit in seminary school so long. Seminary school said that those men were seven deacons. The Bible never said it. Listen. Wherefore, wherefore, brethren, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. Seven men of honest report. Full of the Holy Ghost. They got, a, they got to be full. Full of the Holy Ghost. And, full of it. And, and wisdom. And they, and, and they can't be stupid. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I don't care how much Holy Ghost they have, they better not be stupid. That's right. <laughs> Whom who we may appoint over this business. And, be but quick. We, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer. All and, right. And to the ministry of the word. Yes. And the saying, please, the whole thing. Now I want everybody to pay attention who was selected. Right. 
All right. And they chose Stephen. I want you to pay attention to that. Stephen, or who some pronounce Stephen. here, Stephen. Stephen. All right. A man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And, and Philip. I want you to pay attention to him. Philip. And and Prochorus. Yes. And Nicanor. Nicanor. And Timon. Timon and Parmenius. Parmenius. And Nicholas. Nicholas the Proselyte of Antioch. Yes. Whom they set before the apostles. Now they set these men before the apostles. And when they had prayed. And when the apostles prayed. They laid their and hands the apostles on them. laid hands on these seven. And the word of God increased. That lets you know the apostles sent these men out. Because when the word of God increased, that means more men was added to the ministry to spread the gospel given to the apostles. But where did it say that any of these fellows were deacons? Amen. Amen. Look ye out among you seven men. No, look ye out among you seven deacons. Look ye out among you seven men. Well, seven Pastor men. Dennis, the priest, my, my bishop told the church, look out among you seven men, and the church selected me to be what? Amen. What, to carry the bishop's briefcase? What, to collect the offering? Amen. I want to soak you a little. You can shout next year. <laughs> I love to teach the people. Yeah. Jumping and shouting ain't going to get you to the kingdom. Knowledge is power here. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Let's come back to Bible. <laughs> Stephen, Philip, okay. Pacharis, Nicanor, Timon, Nicanor, Parmenius, Parmenius, and Nicholas. And Nicholas. Pro These were seven. Seven men. All right, now, let's see what were they. Let's look at Philip and see what he was. Now in the book of Acts, chapter 21. Follow me in your Bible. I want this to be good in case I got any deacons here. That's right. I want, I want to help you. I say this not to condemn you. I say this to educate you. Amen. Anybody can go to church and do the huckabuck. <laughs> Anybody right. can do that. That's right. Go ahead and take God. Amen. I want to have some knowledge here. Yeah. Imagine walking around saying you are a deacon and somebody asks you, well, how did you become that? And yet you go to the scripture. Yeah. Whatever office and ministry you hold, the way you become now is the way you got to become then. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. All right. Now in the book of Acts chapter 21 and at verse 8. Pay attention. To Philip. Acts chapter 21 and verse 8. Glory to God. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed. The next day, we that was with Paul, we left. And came unto Caesarea. We came to Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist. Wait a minute. What was Philip? The evangelist. Come on, let's say what Pastor Jenner was more than one Philip in the Bible. Let's see what this Philip, who he was connected to. Which was one of the seven and abode with him. Wait, 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 wait. We entered into the house of Philip the evangelist. Philip the who? The evangelist. And what was he part of? Which was one of the seven. He was one of the seven men that the apostles ordained. And what was he ordained to be? Evangelist. A what? Evangelist. A what? Philip the evangelist. Amen. In the book of Acts, they were not deacons. That the apostles are ordained in that scripture? No. Seven men. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Glory to God. Go ahead. Hmm? We entered into the house of Philip the evangelist. And what was this Philip? Which was one of the seven. And abode with him. Amen. Now you come on in Philip's house with them. That's right. And you got to call Philip what the Bible called Philip. Philip the Evangelist. Philip, when I came up in so-called apostolic, one minister read this, and he was still determined to hold that in the book of Acts, those fellows was made deacons. And he said, well, they were evangelist deacons. I told him ain't no such Same. thing as an evangelist deacon. No. Now, deacon. How many of you here, brothers and sisters, have ever been taught what is the qualifications of a deacon? Of a deacon. Have you ever even been taught it? Do you know most bishops dwindle? This is all the, what the deacon do in most churches. Come here, come here, uh, bro brother minister. Now, minister Esmith, just say he's bishop. 
Most, this is all what most deacons do. You, you walk into the pulpit, Bishop. That's it. That's it. Or if the, if the deacon ain't carry his bag, the deacon is his personal water boy. That's right. Yeah. It's either serve him water, get his bag, collect the offering. Did you not know that the qualifications of a deacon is almost identical right. to the qualifications of a bishop? That's right. So obviously, this office of a deacon is not as small as churches made it. Amen. The qualifications of a deacon is almost identical to the qualifications of a bishop. Its only difference is almost in one place. A bishop is not given to wine, and a bishop can only a, a bishop does not can have no wine, and the deacon can only have a little. And I'm gonna show you what that little, how you have it. How you, that's right. In case I got any sly dipping deacons in here. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. All right. I want the book of Timothy. Everybody all right? Yes, First and Timothy. Follow me. First. Follow me. Follow me. Yeah. I know many of you used to go on to church with Bishop. Ain't that all right? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no high here. Amen. I want God people to learn God's precept. The more you learn about God, the better you can serve him. Amen. The more you learn about God, it takes away from the false prophet his ability to trick you, lie to you, and con you. That's right. That's right. But you got to have some teaching. Are you listening? All right, the book of Timothy. First and first Timothy chapter three, and we'll start reading at verse eight. No, begin at verse one. At verse one. I want to show you the similarities of the bishopric and the deaconship. Right. Brother, do you, a deacon is an area of ministry. Oh yeah. It ain't someone to just walk around with a briefcase and a glass of water and help the first lady up and down the step. Yeah. Are you listening to the old man? I want to show you first the qualifications of a bishop. Then we're going to go down to the qualifications of a deacon. Right. And look how similar God has them. First Timothy chapter 3 and we're starting Follow with me. verse 1. All right. This is a true saying. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. No, if a woman desire the office of a bishop. If a man desire the office of a am bishop. Am I right? Amen. If a woman. If a man desire. I, I, I know the churches you come from, they call the women missionaries. You don't have a female in the Bible that was called a missionary. Right. Pastor Dennis, I'm a missionary. No, you ain't. No, you're not. That's like a $3 bill. It don't exist. That's right. There's not a place in the... Let's see what the Bible says first, the women should be called. First, follow me. First follow first me. Thing. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Then I'm going to go back to the bishopric and the deaconship. Follow me. First Timothy chapter 5. And we'll start at verse 1. First Timothy chapter 5. We're going to see what the mothers in the church should be called and what the young women should be called. That's right. All right. First Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. All right. Rebuke not an elder, Rebuke not an elder but elder. entreat him as a father. And treat him like a father. And the younger men as brethren. Called the young, how should we treat the young men? The younger men as brethren. And? The elder women. What should we address the elder women? As mothers. Missionary. Mothers. Give chapter and verse again. First Timothy chapter 5, now we're at verse Verse 2. What should we call them? The elder women as mothers. No, missionaries. Missionary Cynthia. Mothers. Missionary Mary. Mothers. Missionary Pauline. Mothers. How in the world you become a missionary? Who told you you this stuff? Who told you you some missionary? That's right. Well, Pastor Jenner, my bishop gave it to me, and I'm going to take it from you. <laughs> Amen. We ain't going to call you nothing but what the Bible call you. That's and right. if God said for you to be addressed as a mother and use an elderly woman, then we're going to do what God said. Amen. The elder women. Take God over your bishop. That's right. The elder women. As mothers. And 
The younger as sisters. They know, call the younger sweetheart. Sisters. Don't you hear these bishops preaching? Baby, hundred child, sugar bun, wait! Wait. That trash shouldn't come from the pulpit. The younger How is sisters. a bishop preaching and calling the women sugar baby, honey bun, baby doll? Where you get these pet names from? You give your wife the pet names. That's right. But in church, That's right. what shall we call the women? The younger as sisters. What else? With all purity. That mean when you call a young woman sister, how much you say it? With all purity. You can't have nothing behind it. That's right. How That's much right. you say it? With all purity. You can't say praise the Lord, sister. <laughs> huh? That's right. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Hallelujah. Oh, you got to be pure when you call her sister. With all purity. When Bishop look at her and call her sister, he can't be looking at her. Praise the Lord, sister. The, the law work in mysterious ways. Yeah. Whatever God says, how? The younger is sisters with all purity. The Bible didn't say call the women missionaries. We ain't calling them that. That's right. the, Bible, the Bible ain't say do that stuff. Mm -hmm. The Bible ain't say your wife is the first lady. The first lady is dead. Her name is Eve. Yeah. There ain't no pastor wife should be called the first lady. She got to follow the word of God like anybody else. Yeah, or do. she'll go to hell with anybody else. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? The elder women as mothers. Yeah, a lot of you preachers are afraid to preach this because you got to go back home. Yes, sir. Now you scared your bed going to get cold. But if you're made a preacher, you wouldn't care if frost build up on your mustache and fall off. That's right. You will stick to the word before you lean to your wife. That's right. And a man that put his wife in front of the word, you ain't fit to preach to nobody. Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. This is where the church has made a mess. They have become family churches. That's right. Like the mafia. That's Bishop, right. he's about to die. And before he died, who's always the next one? His son is already being groomed. That way the money stay in the family. Bishop is the pastor. Mother, his wife, is the uh, treasurer. Daughter, secretary. Son, got everybody, everything ran by family. It's not a church, it's a, it's a business. That's right. That's why the church is a name after the bishop. Uh, Johnson's Memorial Temple. Why would you go to a church name after your bishop? Are you kidding what I'm telling you? Cunningham's House of Prayer. Jesus said, upon this rock I build, who church? Who church? It's his church, and if it's his church, the church is named after the builder. That's why it's the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. He built it. He's the head of it. Bible says Christ is the head of the church, not your bishop. Amen. Let's put the church back in order. That's what I'm doing. I'm laboring to put the church back in order. And a lot of folk don't like me for it, and I don't care. Amen. I'm not on no salary. I can preach as free as I want. I can preach as free as I want. Church ain't paying me. I work. I want to say what kind of work you do. Real estate. We rehab houses. Great to start another business. Trucking company. Wonderful. Church ain't paying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wonderful. Church ain't paying me. I'm an independent preacher. Hallelujah. Board of directors ain't telling me what to preach. My bedroom don't dictate what I'm going to preach. The only thing dictates us. Is God and that Bible. That's it. That's right. Either you all out for God or you're not. Am I right? I said. Just come on back to real church or stay home. That's right. Are you getting the old troublemaker? That's right. Fifth chapter of First Timothy. I want to show you the similarities of the office of the bishopric and the deaconship and look how the churches have watered the office of a deacon down to a bag carrier and a water boy. Amen. 
Come on, son. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 3, and we're starting in verse 1. All right. This is a true saying. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. What? He she. desire he. She. He. Now we got a he sheet it. He. He. He desires a good work. I'm not male chauvinist. No, no, no. I don't hate women. This is just God's law. That's it. I don't know why is it that folk hate God's law so bad. The Bible said the head of every woman is the man. The Bible teaches that. Yeah. And a lot of our men, did someone done hijacked their spine, took it, and must sold it. They done something to it. These old weak, good for nothing, Bible toting frauds that call oh, yeah. yourself preacher. Listen, hear the old man now. Your wife should not be dictating the church. Your sermon, listen, if your wife come and complain to you about people in the church, that should not be your sermon. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. Your message for to come from the book, yeah. not from your wife. Amen. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Listen. This is a true saying. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. What is it? He desireth a good work. What's the qualification? A bishop then must be blameless. Must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Wait a minute. No, he divorced and got a second one. The husband of one wife. How many wives he allowed to have? One wife. That doesn't mean you got to be married to be a preacher because marriage ain't got nothing to do with you being the preacher. Right. Because Peter wasn't married. Oh, no, oh. Peter was married, but Paul was not married. Right. And the Lord healed Peter's mother-in-law. But if you are married, how many wives? One wife. One wife. Listen, Peter was a married man, and it didn't affect his apostleship. Paul was not a married man, and not being married did not affect his apostleship. That's right. How is it these men now, You because you are married, your wife bossed the deacons? The brothers got the answer to your wife? That's your wife reprimand the church. Right. Your wife got to discipline the church. And the, in fact, she's the assistant pastor to her husband. Amen. Like Bonnie and Clyde. Amen. A woman that's a real woman don't want no henpeck man. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Amen. But ever since this feminist movement started, yeah. the women became more and more bold and the men became more and more scared. Amen. In the world, you got the Holy Ghost and you found a woman preacher. And the Bible says in the book of Timothy, the second chapter, I suffer not a woman to teach nor the use of authority over the man, but to be in sign for thoughts objection. Here you got P and P A W, woman preachers, yeah. UPC, woman preachers. Bishop Bonner didn't believe in women preachers, but now his, some of his bishops are now wanting to lead to women preachers and divorce and remarry. Yeah. The apostolic churches have gone down. Hell, God knows. Amen. Be more loyal to God yeah. than you are an organization. Yeah. Be more loyal to God than you are some man's movement. Yeah. Some of you folk know women preaching the wrong, but because you're scared to say something to your wife, wife drag you to church and you right behind. <laughs> Lips poked out. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. You the head at home, but you the tail in church. Yeah. And you go around to my son, I wear the pants in my house. You, your pants is empty. empty. <laughs> You're nothing but a set of britches. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. You see, they say, well, that man ain't preaching. You see, that's why I don't, I don't like him because he fuss. No, what you're used to is sugar. I'm not a sugar preacher. No, Jesus says salt is good. I'm a salty preacher. Oh, yeah. No, I don't have no sugar. Uh-uh, no. That ain't nothing sugary about Pastor Guinness. Amen. Eh? Amen. What is that? A bishop then must be blameless. Hey, bishop, if you thought I was any different in person than what you saw over the air, you're sadly mistaken. Amen. A bishop must be what? Blameless. Blameless. The husband of one wife. If you're married, how many wives? One wife. How many wives? One wife. All right, you two and three wives and four wives, divorced liars, claim you saved. You're no more saved than a duck to smoke a cigar. Amen. You're a sinner. Yeah. 
Give me the, let's, let's go as, I want to scale as I go. The seventh chapter of the book of Romans, begin at verse 1 quickly. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 7. Come right? on, son. Go right at verse 1. All right. No, you're not, brother. No, you're not, brother. I speak to them that, know, to the them that know the law. I the law hath dominion the law over man. power over as man. Long as as he long as that man is alive. For the woman. The woman. Which hath an husband. That hath a husband. Is bound by the law. bound by the law. To her husband. To her. 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 Her husband, not somebody else's. Her husband. How long? So long as he lives. What else? But if the husband be dead. If the husband be in prison. If the husband be dead. Respirator. Be dead. Woke up blind. Be dead. Short. Dead. Deaf. Dead. Dumb. Dead. Lame. Dead. Crippled. Dead. Black. Dead. White. Dead. Brown. Dead. Yellow. Dead. Long hair. Dead. Short hair. Dead. No hair. Dead. What? If the husband be dead. Hallelujah. If the husband be what? Be dead. Dying. Dead. Dying. Dead. He on his way out. Dead. Hallelujah. The husband got to be dead. Dead. What? She is loose from the law of her husband. Your husband got to die before you're free. That's right. So then if. Listen at this. Listen at this. Listen at this. So then if. So then if. While, her husband while is, your husband is alive. She be married to yet another you man. got another man while your husband is alive. What is she? She shall be called an adulteress. No, she's a Christian. An adulteress. An usher. An adulteress. A pastor's wife. An adulteress. First lady. An adulteress. Son. Adulteress. Grandma. Adulteress. His mama. Adulteress. Your mama. Adulteress. Hallelujah. You got adulteresses and adulterers. adulterers. An adulterer is a man. An adulteress is a woman. That's right. Give me James 4 and James 4. James chapter 4 and we're at verse 4. Glory to God. Ye adulterers. What? Ye adulterers. That's the man. And adulteresses. That's the woman. That's right. No, you're not the friendship of the world or the enmity with God. Amen. All right, let's go back to the book of Timothy. First Timothy chapter 5. Back in First Timothy with that chapter 3. I want to show you the similarities of the bishop and the deacon. Right. Oh, this is good Holy Ghost yes, persuasion. Is, oh, yeah. Don't get upset with me and go to your fake church tomorrow. Get on back there tomorrow. Get on back. That's right. <laughs> you might as well come on back tomorrow. That's right. Come on, what is that? First Timothy chapter 3, now we're at verse 2. What is it? A bishop then must be blameless. Must be blameless. The husband of one wife. The Bible speak plain. The husband one wife. of one wife. One. One. All one this wife. remarried and divorced trash done crept up in the churches and they jumping around with two wives. Yeah. Huh? Amen. And he's looking at his third one. Mm. <laughs> we're not Mormons. We're supposed to be holy. That's right. Am I ready, right, sir? The husband of one wife. What? Vigilant. All right, fella, you got to be vigilant. You got to be a vigilant man. And? Sober. You got to be sober, stable-minded. Of good behavior. You got to behave. In other words, not a pimp at your job and a preacher at church. Good behavior. You got to have good behavior. Given the hospitality. You got to know how to treat people. Act to teach. What? Act to teach. Now, this is not teaching. You got a sermon already written out. You apt to read. Amen. Why is your sermon written out? But back then, don't you got something written? Here it is right here. Yes. The Bible says this, whatsoever things are written the full time are written for our learning. That we through pages and couple of the scripture might have hope. I don't write out nothing. No. I don't be in some side room. Oh, Lord, give me the no, message. No, no. Oh, Lord. And God made me a preacher. He gave me the message. That's right. Lord, thank God we keep that stuff handy all the time. That's right. Eh? Amen. What is that? Have to teach. You got to know how to teach. Yeah. Take your time. Break the scriptures down. What you don't know, don't touch. Don't bother matters in the Bible that's too deep for you. That's right. Leave it alone. That's right. And wait till you be taught so your information can be right. That's right. Apt to teach. Apt to teach. And when you teach, you don't need an organ playing behind you. No. That's, that's, that's what a lot of y'all folks is used to. Dan, dan, dan. Well, 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 well. And whenever the organ switch keys, Bishop, switch key. That's not the spirit. Not the spirit. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and hath anointed me to do it. Preach the gospel. You don't need no help from an organ, no. from drums, no. or from a piano. Mm -hmm. Your help's supposed to come from the Lord. That's right. Thank God that made heaven and earth. All right. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 3, now we're at verse 3. What is it? Not given to wine. Wait a minute. 
he's working on the office of a bishop. You can't have no wine, so why are you in the AA? Yeah. Huh? Amen. There shouldn't be no bishop in the AA. No. The Alcohol Anonymous. My name is Bishop Fred, and, and, and I've been dry for an hour. Glory to God. Fred is dead. Eh? Not given to wine. Glory to God. You see, brothers and sisters, in most churches, they just ordain men. And people be celebrating, oh, my son is a bishop. My husband became a bishop. And if you ask most people that go to church, what's the qualification of a bishop? They be like, it's qualifications? I, I thought, you know, you just got to be at church for at least 10 or 15 years and you be faithful and, you know, pay your tithes on time and give your offering, then you get ordained. You just as far from the qualification as a goose can sing on this telecast. <laughs> the church of Mother Goose. <laughs> can you imagine? Glory oh, to God. Most men have never. This is the way most men are ordained, brothers and sisters. They are brought before a board of bishops. And the bishops most time have a book and may catechize them. And if they can answer X amount of questions, they give them license. They give them license. I said, you, if that's the way you was ordained, you've been conned. Yeah. You've been duped, bamboozled, led astray, ran amok, hoodwink. <laughs> the Bible says, not given to wine. Your qualifications got to be here, buddy. You ain't a bishop because your brother said you are. What good is someone telling you, man, you're the heavyweight champion of the world, and you can't even fight? And you never fought? That's like going to a surplus army store and you come out of general and the Pentagon don't know you because you bought some stripes. Uh, Go ahead. You know, you, you bought some stripes, got them on your arm and you walking around. You got the green pants, the starch shirt, and alligator shoes. You ain't no soldier. You got the wrong shoes. You ain't got the right uniform. That's right. You can have the title all you want but you got to have the qualifications. Yes. Listen! A bishop then must be blameless. A bishop must be blameless. The husband of one wife. You married one wife. Vigilant. Vigilant. Sober. Stable-minded. Of good behavior. You got to behave. Given to hospitality. You got to be hospitable. Apt to teach. Know how to teach. Not given to wine. No wine. No striker. There's two ways to strike. If the word of God hits you, you can't, and the preacher let you have something to say, you can't get off and try to get scripture to throw off on the man. That's striking verbally. Another way to strike is with your hands. You can't, I, I, I've preached in areas where bishops got so mad at me, they jumped up in the pulpit and grabbed my shoulder. <laughs> the word burnt them like a hot plate. Huh? I've had bishops cuss me out. Why you mother so and so, don't you tell me I'm no bishop. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you nothing. The Bible says. No striker. Don't tell me, I'm, don't, me, don't put Pastor Jennings in it. Right. I didn't write the Bible. Right. I'm just your friendly neighborhood mailman. That's all I am. We come deliver to you the letter of God. The letter of God. That's right. Go oh, take God and the letter killeth and the spirit maketh the lie. All right. Not greedy of filthy lucre. My, 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 my. He can't be what? Not greedy or filthy lucre. He can't love money. Not greedy. That kill almost everything in the pulpit. When an offering is taken, the offering should be taken. Bless it, gone. When an offering being collected now, bishop stand over and see. <laughs> then if the pan ain't full enough, Look out, here come a spirit. The Lord just spoke to me, and the Lord told me to tell you there's about $15,000 more in the house. And the Lord told me to tell you that really want this magnificent, omnipotent, big, large, great, Larger than the Empire State Building blessing. <laughs> Come on up. The way preachers is teaching this money stuff, they got you thinking 
that your connection with God is based upon your dollars and cents. Well, if that's so, why did Jesus say the poor you have with you always? There should be no godly event, whether it's singing or hearing the preaching, that you got to buy a ticket or pay to see it. That's right. Because if it's of God, then it should be free. If it's of God, why do I got to pay for it? When God brings something, it's for everybody. That's right. Yeah? All right. Not greedy or filthy lucre. You can't love money, preacher. So if you go to a church and they don't give you no speakers off and don't get upset. I went to one of Bible Way Worldwide churches years ago. And they invited me there. There were so many people, no more could get in the building. They was actually standing out on the sidewalk. And there was an old bishop, and uh, I was much younger. I think I may have been about in my 30s then. And uh, he saw all them people. He said, I never had these many people in my church in my life. He said, we're going to get a speaker's off. I got up and tapped him. I said, Bishop, I don't want no honor. He stood there. He looked. He said, what did you say? I said, Bishop, I, I don't want no offer. He, he did like that. <laughs> he shook his head. He said, wait a minute. He said, I've been ministering almost 70 years. He said, I ain't never met a minister who said he didn't want a speaker's offer. He said, young man, is something wrong with you? <laughs> I said, Bishop, I was invited to preach. I don't want your money. He said, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I want everybody money. <laughs> Lord. Now, if you get an offering for a speaker, you haven't violated no law. But if he ain't speaking the truth, what you want to give him something for? That's right. Why you want to give him something for lying to you? <laughs> a false prophet? Yeah, yeah now, a false prophet. I don't care if it's your husband, your son, your daddy, your uncle. If they're a false prophet, call it for what it is. If your daddy's a false prophet, just say, my daddy's a false prophet. <laughs> if your husband's a false prophet, just speak, speak the truth, sister. Well, Pastor Jenny, you're right. I'm married to a false prophet. <laughs> Call it for what it is. And then let him take you home. <laughs> These men, the word of God says, not greedy or filthy lucre. Can't love money. That's written, man. There was a preacher years ago out of Jamaica, New York. I invited him to come preach. I think I was in my 20s, maybe about 24, 25. And uh, we didn't raise no offering. That's general offering, no speakers on. He called me back that Monday and said, Pastor Jennings? I said, yes, sir. He said, I want to tell you, young man, I enjoyed the service. <laughs> I said, good. He said, but I think you forgot something. I said, what was that, sir? He said, you didn't give me an offering. I said, I didn't intend on giving you one. I said, you, didn't, you, you was invited to preach, not to get money. He said, oh. Because of our popularity around the world, there are churches that ask me to come speak. And I tell them, I don't mind come speaking, but you're not going to make money off my name. In other words, ain't nobody's hope that you're going to put my name to some dollars. Are you listening? Here now, I, not, God, I want the tage so straight until you can't be confused. That's right. All right, real quick. Not greedy or filthy, Luca. Can't love money. But patient. You gotta be patient. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. In other words, you can't get upset quick. One scripture says, not soon anger. All right. Not covetous. Not, he shouldn't desire. Now hold it. This really nailed down a lot of preachers because this stuff that they teach. In reference to touch and claim, that's a covetous message. Covetous. Why are you go touching and claiming somebody else's house and somebody else's car and somebody else's wife and somebody else's husband? That's covetousness. Amen. 
Her chain claim is a covetous message. Right. All right. Not covetous. All right. One that rules well his own house. What? One that rules well his own house. One that rules well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. As long as those children are under your roof, you're responsible. When they move out and get out from under your roof, you ain't got that to worry about. But as long as you under my roof, you're going to follow the word of God. These young girls under your roof got no business with pants on, got no business with hot pants on, should not be out here with halters on, no lipstick, no fake eyelashes, no wigs, no earrings, no finger rings. No fake fingernails, no bracelets, none of this garbage out here. No dyeing your hair. No, none of that. One that rules well his own house. You got to rule your house. Having his children in subjection. Your boy, look, why is your daughter boyfriend spending the night? Yeah. Why in the world will a responsible father and a responsible mother let your daughter's two cent boyfriend spend the night? Amen. Sit in your house. Hug and kiss with his arm all around her. And the only thing you say, my baby's growing up. Oh, Hercules, Hercules. My baby's growing up. Yeah, and something else going to grow up and grow out. That's right. You mothers and fathers, get your house back in order. You mothers, stop wearing mini skirts. You complain about the way your daughter's looking, you buy her clothes. You the one got her skirt this big. You the one got her blouse this big. And here's mother now, mother out there now, dressed no longer than my jacket with a split in that, and she got a cane and trying to switch. Lord. Am I right, I said? You mothers need to stop trying to be your daughter's big sister. Your daughters need a mother. Yeah. Are you listening to the old man? One that rules well his own house. You got to rule your house. Rule, rule it. Rule. I don't care how dictatorial it sounds. It says rule it. Rule well his rule own, it. own house. That mean if your father, brother, and you a bishop, and your father got a second wife, and your father's wife still living, which is your mama, then your father and his second wife, which is his girlfriend, should not be sleeping under the roof of the bishop. That's right. That's right. Now your adulterous wife gonna be sitting here under the roof in, in, in the guest bed. Amen. With daddy. Amen. Trying to keep you up all night. <laughs> Rule well. One that rules well his own house. If your daughter is already married and yet she gonna get married the second time and you a bishop, you should not be performing that wedding. Right. We don't even give you cards and congratulate you to an, to an adulterous marriage. Right. Uh, ain't nobody in the church gonna be in the wedding. Nobody in the church gonna go to the wedding. Nobody in the church gonna sing at the wedding. Yeah. Why is church people having worldly songs sing at a wedding? You're supposed to be saved. Right. Claim you got some holy gas. Now, how did Teddy Pendergrass get in your wedding? Mm. Here you walking down the aisle, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, and someone singing, Turn out the lights. <laughs> Turn out the lights. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Am I right, I said? These folks ain't saved. These folks are not saved. They've been lied to. All this garbage is in a wedding. You claim you're baptized and have the Holy Ghost. If you baptized and got the Holy Ghost, why is the bride chest all showing? A cleavage all exposed. And the Bible said that the shame of your nakedness be covered. Your bare back all out, and why is the bride throwing a garter? And here you just got married and got your dress up, and another man going all the way up your thigh, and your husband just sitting there. <laughs> oh man, go ahead, do it, man. Do it, do it, do it, do it. You mean to tell me you just got a new wife, and some other man got a garter, and a photographer, he's up her gown. And the new wife just sitting there. <laughs> Make 
making more room. <laughs> you claim you're apostolic and Pentecostal and non-denominational. You're everything but holy. That's the problem. You're everything but holy. Holiness is stricter than anything on the planet. Amen. Because holiness is supposed to reflect the entirety of God. That's right. The completeness of God's law and God's precept. Hallelujah. And God demands total submission to his rule of law. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if it's me. If I get out of line, God going to put me right back in line with that Bible. Yes. I'm not above the word. I have to submit to that word or I go to hell like anybody else. That's right. Come on, son. For if a man know not how to rule his own house. You mean to tell me in your own house, in yeah. blasting rap music and partying all in, in the bishop's house. Yeah. Bunch of old sloppy two-legged boys in the neighborhood and these wild hot pan girls laying all around your steps. And you bishop. Son's going to tell you I ain't going to church. Really? Really? Huh. And you under my roof? Yeah. Daughter gonna talk back to mother? And mother gonna say, huh, I ain't gonna argue with you. You say what you want. And you and your listen, when I came up, glory to God. <laughs> listen, when I came up, you, these young girls wasn't doing all that talking to their mama. Because it's amazing how the mothers can talk and hit without looking at you. They ain't got to turn their back. You busy lipping? Bow! <laughs> but now, you mothers, let your daughter give you word for word. And all you do is tell her, Nancy, Nancy, wait a minute. Let me get a word in, Nancy. What? What do you mean, let you get a word in? Amen. Slap Nancy back to her childhood. How do you expect for your sons and daughters to respect you as parents when you live like dogs in front of them? Oh, yeah. How you gonna tell your chastise your son for cussing and you cuss him out? You get on him for drinking and yet the first shot of beer came from your refrigerator. Now you gonna tell your son, come on man, put your pants out, put your pants up. And his father pants is hanging down, earring in his ear. A grown man with a ponytail. Yeah. A man bun. A man bun. A man bun? That's right. Give me the 11th chapter, 1 Corinthians. And at verse 14. Says what? Doeth not even nature itself Doeth teach you. Doeth not common sense teach you. That if a man, if a man, have, man long have long hair, it, is, a it shame is embarrassing unto him. When I look at a man walking up the aisle, I should not mistake him for a woman. No. Ain't no man should be. No. Am I right, I say? Amen. All right, finish up the book of Timothy quick, son. Back in 1 Timothy chapter 3, we're at verse 5. Read quick. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Yes. Not a novice. What you mean not a novice? A novice is someone that just got started, a beginner. Why would you ordain a man to be a bishop and he only been saved three years? He's a beginner. He's a novice. He just got started. And the Bible is very clear here. Not a novice. It says don't get a novice, a beginner. That's being lifted up with pride. That's exactly what happened. You go ordain most of these young men, you can't even call them by their first name brother. You can't even call him John no more. Uh, I'm Bishop John now. Don't call me just Brother John. I'm Bishop John. Bishop John. No, you fool John. Yeah, I'm heard all around the world. I'm said, some folk call me just simply PJ. Some just call me, hey, Gino. I'm fine with that. I'm not title crazy. That's right. Huh? Listen. Not a novice. You can't get a beginner. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of gonna, the devil. He's going to exalt himself. He's going to put himself higher than what he is. And then the devil going to put something on him and knock him flat on his back and embarrass him. That's right. You should never push a young minister quick. Don't push him hard. Uh-uh. You get up there yelling, preach, preach, preach. He ain't saying nothing. Yeah. 
Listen. Moreover, he must have a good report. He must have a good report. Of them which are without. Yes. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. What else? Likewise. So here, likewise. Must the deacons be great? The deacon got to be great. Not double tongue. Can't be a liar. Not given to much wine. Uh oh, not too much wine. And notice the bishop, no wine. No the wine. deacon, not too much. Now, let's find out how and when does God permit the drinking of wine? Of wine. First Timothy chapter. According four. to the Bible. Right. Follow me. First Timothy chapter 5, we're at verse 23. You know, because some of y'all folk got wine with your fish and grits, wine with your new chicken noodle soup, and wine with your macaroni and cheese. You don't wind yourself out. Out. Bunch of drunken churchgoers. <laughs> huh? That's why folk think they're in the spirit. They're in the bottle. That's right. Listen. First Timothy 5 and at verse 23. Parliament. Drink no longer water. Drink no longer water. But, but use a little wine. How much? A little wine. How much? A little wine. That's not a pint. No. That's little. not a quart. Little. That's not even a glass full. That's right. A little wine. For thy stomach's sake. And? And thine often infirmity. All right. The Bible lets you use wine if you got a stomach sake, a stomach condition or affirmity that you had often, but notice it emphasized a little. little. So your drinking of the wine for your stomach condition should not cause you to be drunk, because that means you're using too much. Right. And the only other place where you're allowed to drink wine is in the Lord's Supper. So I'm saying, well, you got to have wine. The Bible said in the book of Psalms, the cup is in the Lord's hand, and the wine is red. And the only time the cup was in the hand of the Lord was when he served the Lord's Supper. That's right. He didn't do it the way your church do it. No. Got all them bar glasses. What you call shot glasses. You know the way your church do it. Let's get some Bible in the book of Corinthians quickly. Now in the book of First Corinthians. Let's see what is the communion. Mm -hmm. Let's see the communion of the Lord. Of the Lord. Follow me. Follow me. Amen. Follow me. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. Let's see the communion of the Lord. All right. First Corinthians chapter 10. And we're at verse 16. Listen. The cup of blessing. All right. All right. This is a good question. The cup of of blessings. Which we bless. Which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Oh. Is the cup of blessings that we bless the communion of the blood of Christ? Or is it the tray of glasses that you bless? The cup of blessing. I really would like to know. Yeah. The tray of glasses that your bishop blessed. Mm. How did that become the communion of the Lord? Because according to the scriptures, only one shed blood. That's right. Look at all them cups. Well, Pastor Jennings, the Bible says that Jesus said, drink this cup, this wine, and divide it amongst yourselves. And all oh, right away, they think that mean that you just get a bunch of glasses. Now, how many men used to hang out in the hood on the corner with their friends with a bottle of liquor? Raise your hand. Y'all didn't have glasses, did you? Hmm. You had that bottle wrapped in a brown paper bag, is that right? All y'all took a hit, is that right? Wasn't it being divided among yourselves? Divided among yourselves. Now, if a sinner got sense enough to know that he take his liquor and divide among themselves with no glasses, why is your bishop got sense enough to know that the way you divide the cup is not to pour it in a bunch of little shot glasses that he got from the bar that he owned? And he took the cup. He took the tray of glasses. And he took the cup. Follow me in your Bible. Luke chapter 22 and at verse 17. Luke 22, 17 says. And he took the cup. He took the tray of glasses. And he took the he took the tray of glasses. He took the cup. And did what? And gave thanks. And said, take this. Take these glasses. Take this. These. This. Take these. This. Only, only one died and shed blood. Right. Just one. That's right. That's what that one cup represents. That's right. One. Take this and divide it among yourselves. And they all drunk from it. They didn't do it like your church is doing it now. Come on, this is the communion of the Lord. You lie. It's a lie. You lie. That's right. Follow me in your Bible. Give chapter and verse for that again. That was in Luke chapter 22 and at verse 17. All and, right. And he took the cup. Took the cup. And gave thanks. And he gave thanks. All right, go back to Timothy and finish up the deacon because my time is getting away. Come on, son. You got to move quick. Back the in 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Read and, fast. And we're at verse 8. Come on, son. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. Oh, he can't love money either? Not greedy of filthy lucre. Why you got to keep paying deep for his services? That's right. Pay him to cut the grass. Pay him to wash the window. Pay him to teach. That for what? Amen. You work in the church, it should be free. Yeah. You have to love the Lord enough to work free. Yeah. 
Did not Jesus die free of charge? That's right. Pastor Jenner, you mean to tell me all this work you're doing and nobody pay you? Nope. nope. I'm working to get paid. Yeah. But what kind of pay you want? I want to go back with Jesus. That's what I'm working for. All right. Holding the mystery of the faith. Wait a minute. The deacon got to hold the mystery of the faith how? In a pure conscience. All right. Now, how in the world are you going to know this man got the mystery unless you hear him express it? Right. And for him to express it, he got to teach. That's right. All right. And let these also first be proved. Then what? Then let them use the office of a deacon. All right, churchgoers, will you please tell me where did the office of the acting deacon come from? That's right. someone who's not a deacon. You acted. acted. You acted first. Yeah. Where did it come from? You were acting deacon, acting bishop, acting pastor, junior bishop, junior elder. Listen, you're not even a junior devil. That's right. You're just of the devil. How, where do these men get this stuff from? Right. Junior bishop, junior apostle, junior pastor, junior elders. Where do you get this rubbish? Deaconess, which is a female deacon. That stuff ain't never existed in the Bible. No. Why did Jesus say it thus? I Back Having God. made the commandment of God of none effect. By your tradition. Here chapter and verse again. Now in Mark chapter 7, we're still in verse 7. Follow me. How be it in vain do they worship me? In vain do they worship me? Teaching four doctrines, the commandments of men. You got five minor prophets and five major. It's supposed to have been seven deacons in the book of Acts. Paul died and he rose chopping block. John died 96 AD uh, on the day of Pentecost. There were 120 that received the Holy Ghost. The Bible didn't say that. And there were 3,000 added to the church. The Bible didn't say that either. Acts chapter 1 and at verse 15. The Bible didn't say that. Pay close attention to the language of the Bible. Amen. Come on, son. Acts chapter 1 and at verse 15. What is it? And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. And said what? And said the number of names together were about 120. No, the preacher said it was 120. Were about 120. Years ago, before my father passed away, he was one of the elders in the church. And he got up and preached, and he read the scripture that said, this scripture right here, he was preaching on a Wednesday night. And he said the Bible says it was about 120. And he said, that mean it was 119. Yeah. I sit there. My father gave a benediction and was done. I said, hey, wait, 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 Pop, wait. I said, would you please tell me how did you get 119? He said, Gene, the Bible said about 120. About is not a certain number. I said, that's true. So where did you get 119 from? I said, it could have been, somebody can say, 121, 122, 118. He said, well, what you said? I said, I'm going to say what the Bible said. About 120. About 120. And I said to my father, that's what you're going to say. I said, now, you're going to come right before the church. Because you spoke it openly, you're going to correct it openly. Amen. My father said, he laughed and said, I got new respect for you. He said, because, boy, if you won't let me get away, I ain't worrying about nobody else. Come to the word of God, I don't care who you are. Right. I'm very particular because the people today is eating sugar and junk and nothing sound, and we want to put them through a detox. Detox them from all this rotten teaching. That's right. I know this may be a hard pill for some of you to swallow because you've been taught something for years, but never be closed-minded when it comes to the word of God. And always remember, the word got more information than you. Oh, yes. What did he say? Back in Mark chapter 7 and at verse 8. All right. For laying aside the commandment of God. What did they do? Ye hold the tradition of men. And this is what happened. We are holding men's tradition. When the Lord come back, Gabriel going to blow the trumpet. The Bible ain't tell you Gabriel going to blow no trumpet. The Bible ain't never said that. The Bible ain't never told you that. Peter was crucified, head down, feet up. Peter was crucified upside down. The way Peter died is not even in your Bible. I want to say, what? It's not even in there. These bishops get up there, that Peter, I want to die like Peter. Head down, head down, and feet up. The Bible ain't never said how Peter died since the Bible been the Bible. 
Some folks over here shaking their heads like, oh my God. Because when you think of it, some of you shouted off this stuff, didn't you? You, you thought the preacher was on the road. You jumped up. Go ahead, Bishop. He get up telling those lies. Five minor prophets and five major. Paul crucified, head down and feet up. John died, 96 AD, in a pot of boiling oil. He suffered. Bible ain't said no such thing. Bible ain't said John died, 96 AD, in a pot of boiling nothing. Amen. No oil, no spaghetti, nothing. Amen. You know who teach this? Catholics, Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Pentecostal, non-nominational, apostolic. Have you not heard there were seven dispensations? They said the first one is called innocence, then conscience, then human government, and promise, law, and grace. And they said the last one is called kingdom of age, your kingdom of liar. The Bible ain't never called it that. Never, and this is this proves that they lied. They said when conscience closed, they said when Adam bit of the fruit, that's when conscience began, the dispensation of conscience. Yes, conscience or Adam became aware when his eyes came open. But then they said conscience closed when Noah closed the door of the ark. How are you gonna tell that lie? How many here are not conscious now that you're wrong? Then the preachers are so mixed up, they say when Jesus was born, he was born in grace because the Bible said grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. They say so when Jesus came, that started the sixth dispensation because grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. How blind are you when Jesus was born? He was born under the law. Book of Galatians chapter 4. Follow me in your Bible. In Galatians chapter 4 and we're at verse 4. That's right. But when the fullness of the time was the come. The Bible says even so we was children in bondage mm -hmm. under the elements of the world. Yeah. When the fullness of time was come. God sent forth the son. When did the son arrive? What was ruling? Made of a woman made under the law. The son when he came he was made when? Under the law. Made when? Under the law. Made when? Under the law. Under the, law. the Bible said grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That means mercy came by him. And he brought truth. That's right. Grace is mercy. Yeah. Where these fellas get all this stuff from? The Bible speaks plain. He was made under, under the, the law. law. When that body came from the womb of the woman, it was born under the law. That's why he said he came to fulfill the law. How are you going to fulfill what's not here? That's right. He come to fulfill it. Fulfill it. That's right. What did he say? Back in Mark chapter 7, now at verse 8. All right. For laying aside the commandment of God, uh -huh. ye hold the tradition of men. Ye hold what? The tradition of men. That's what I'm trying to get people away from. Right. All around the world, men tradition. It's easy to tell what church got men tradition. Just look at the name. When you put apostolic on there, well, Pastor Jenna, that's something I've been wanting to ask you. What do you got against apostolic faith? There's, I don't have nothing against what the apostles believed. I believe what they believe. My argument is the faith of the apostles wasn't named after them. That's right. That's right. Jesus ain't never thought that much of no apostle no. and no prophet no, no. that he would name his belief. his belief. Because before there was any apostles, God had a belief. That's right. Didn't it? That's right. Before any apostles was made, God had a, belief. had a belief. So please tell me, who told you your faith was called apostolic? apostolic. Who told you that? Mm -hmm. Well, the apostolic faith started on the day of Pentecost. Ain't no Bible told you that lie. No. Faith means belief. Faith means belief. In the book of Jude, chapter faith 1. Faith means belief. Faith being belief. The apostle believed in one God. One God, the belief of one God was here before any apostles walked earth. That's right. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. Were there any apostles back there? No. Ephesians chapter 1 and at verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him. 
before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. Who told you you was apostolic? Who told you that was the name of your faith? Mm. Who told you that? I want to give you a higher knowledge. Mm -hmm. Who told you that? You're supposed to be what Jesus is. That's right. You're supposed to be what God is. How in the world are you going to tell the Baptist? Well, the Baptist is not in the Bible. Who told you there's a faith in the Bible called apostolic? Read it to me. All you got to do is read it. You never thought of this, have you? A faith in the Bible called apostolic. Well, Pastor Jen, you say your faith is holy. Where's that in the Bible? I'm about to get it with joy right now. Jude chapter 1 and at verse 20. Follow me in your Bible. See, a lot of you won't follow me because you're scared to see it. Because you want to hold to your tradition. Your apostolic faith, folk, where in the Bible that says your faith is called apostolic? The reason why I can bark it so loud because I used to have that label until God opened my understanding. I had the same label. The same label I had. Holy Ghost dealt with me one day and told me, go back. Go back to the original book. And I obeyed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I obeyed Amen. and went back. And all I found was holy prophets, holy apostles. Holy is without no man shall see the Lord. Holy Ghost, not apostolic ghosts. Now, you folks that say you believe in apostolic or you claim you're apostolic, we believe in the faith of the apostles. But what the apostles had, had a name. And it wasn't called what you're called. Let's get some Bible. Jude chapter 1 and we're at verse 20. What? But ye Give below. chapter and verse again. Jude chapter 1. Jude. It ain't got a lot of chapters. It only got one chapter one right chapter. next to Revelation. So you can't get mixed up and get lost. Well, I can't find it. What chapter he said? It only got one chapter. One chapter. So stop stumbling. <laughs> Go for that Bible up. Come on, son. Jude chapter 1 and at verse 20. Follow me. But ye beloved. Talking to the church. Ye beloved. Ye beloved. Building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. On your most holy faith. Building up yourselves on your most holy Baptist faith. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Trinitarian faith. Holy faith. Apostolic faith. Holy faith. Non-denominational faith. Holy faith. Apostolic faith. Holy, holy faith. faith. Now who are you going to take? Your movement, your organization, or the Bible? Because I'm going to take the Bible. Right. That's right. We're supposed to be what God is. Was God apostolic? No. Being that some of you don't want to say amen to this, I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Was God, Jehovah, Elohim, Yahweh, I am, that I am, the rock, yeah. the almighty, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the first and last, was he apostolic and yet he is our father and we are his children That's right. and if we are his children we're supposed to be whatever he is That's right. all right let's get some bible and see what he is now in the book of leviticus chapter 19 why nobody won't speak in tongue off this why nobody won't shout off this huh. sometimes you see them old mothers get the jump they, they want to keep the hip in place you know <laughs> Glory to God. All right. In the book of, of Leviticus chapter 19, and we're starting at verse 1. Follow me in your Bible. I want to get Leviticus 19, and, and for those that say, well, Pastor Jennings, we're not under the Old Testament now. I'm not done. I'm going to get the New Testament too. New Testament too. That way I sew you up tight. You don't fall out to him. That's right. What is it? In Leviticus chapter 19, we're starting at verse 1. What is it? And the Lord spake unto Moses. And there's only one Lord, and he said, I'm the same yesterday and today and forevermore. And then what he said? Amen. Amen. What did he say? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. The Lord spake to Moses, saying. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. And what? And say unto them. 
Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be apostolic. Ye shall be holy. You shall be Pentecostal. Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be Lutheran. Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be non-denominational. Ye shall be holy. No, Gino Jennings said it. And the Lord spake. Pastor Jennings said it. The Lord spake. PJ said it. The Lord spake. Gino. The Lord spake. Gino. The Lord spake. Mr. Jennings. The Lord spake. What am I trying to teach you? Will you please take the Lord over your preacher? Yeah. Why are you so devilish dedicated to some man who won't give your Bible for his talk? Yeah. Now you say you got the Holy Ghost and I'm pointing you to the Bible? You got to be a product of hell to fight the Bible because God don't fight his own word. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. I know this may hurt some of you, huh? because I used to be apostolic too, until the great Elohim, who would take God, spoke to me in the wee hours of the night and moved me and opened my understanding. Who would take God, I took that mess off the church sign. Yeah. We was called First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. I couldn't defend them apples. Somebody asked you, well, where is it in the Bible that says apostolic faith? You make this long explanation. Well, it, it means that we believe, preach, and practice. What the apostles believe, preach, and practice. All right, I had a Baptist man write me. He said, well, if you say being Baptist is wrong, he said, I use the title Baptist because I baptize. Mm. <laughs> now, another group say, well, my religion is Christianity because we believe in Christ. Right. You understand what I'm saying? There ain't no religion in the Bible called Christianity. Christianity. I want this to be good in case anybody here think that your religion is Christianity. You've been lied to. Yeah. Christ is in the Bible. Yeah. Christian is in the Bible. Yeah. That's a person who strives to live like Christ. But there's not a religion from Genesis to half a revelation. Amen. Never mind the whole book, not even half of it. That's called Christianity. Not one! Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be holy. You know who was the first religious group that called themselves apostolic? It was not Bishop Lawson. It was not Bishop Johnson. It was not Bishop Hayward. It was not Bishop Seymour. The term apostolic came out of Rome. The Catholic Church was the first one that's called apostolic. And to this day, they got a house, a palace over there called the Apostolic Palace. Within their doctrinal statement, they have what they call the Apostolic Creed. It came from Rome. Amen. Amen. My former brothers, the apostles, they preached to be holy. holy. Until they said, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Apostle Paul said, a highway shall be there and a way. And then he said, what it shall be called. He said, it shall be called... Way of, the way of holiness. Way of holiness. Brother, I tell you, when you undoing what man done, you got a job on your hands. Because you find some people that claim they believe the Bible, believe some of it. When you show them what's in the Bible and it goes against their tradition, they say, my spirit don't agree with that. <laughs> my, my, my spirit down within, you see. My spirit within. My spirit with that. I don't agree with that. Well, wait a minute. Whose spirit is it? Because according to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost don't fight the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost never fight against himself. Our flesh fight the Holy Ghost. Come on, you apostolic bishops and elders and ministers and half pint deacons. Get your Bible. Ye shall be holy. Get your Bible. That's why when I debate men, sometimes I bark. I want Bible. That's right. I want Bible. That's right. Come on back to Bible. Oh, yeah. When I debated Mr. Vegas down there in Jamaica, I never heard of Vegas. Only Vegas I heard of was Las Vegas. That's it. And he come justifying women looking like prostitutes. When I normally debate a man, I stand in one spot. He run all over the pool, pit all over. The... I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to track him down like I'm hunting rabbits. Everywhere he ran, I was behind him. 
I want Bible. I want Bible. That's right. I demand Bible. Why do I demand Bible? We have been lied to and robbed by preachers almost all of our life. We have assumed that what they was telling us was truth. We were forbidden by 99.9 .9 of every bishop and every elder who claimed to be an overseer to ask questions. We done gave money, we done mortgaged our houses, we done sacrificed our children and took food out of their mouths to build churches and schools. You done bought your bishop cars, you done paid his rent, you done paid his mortgage. Go ahead, brother. And all you got in return was years of being lied to. And now God in his great mercy come along and show us the right way. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Well, Pastor Jennings, I can give you an explanation for apostolic. I don't want your mouth. I want Bible. If you don't start turning these leaves, take your mouth and shut it up. Amen. The Bible says, Ye shall be holy. Get the chapter and verse again. Now in Leviticus chapter 19, we're at verse 2. Get at verse 1. At verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, the Lord spake to Moses, or as the Adams call him, Musa. Speak to Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. And what? And say unto them, Ye shall be holy. Why? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Let's see how long holy has been around. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and at verse 4. Follow me in your Bible. According as... Follow me in your Bible. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. What is it? According... As he hath chosen us in him. Who is as he chose us. God is the one that chose us in him when? Before. Before. The foundation of the world. Look how old holiness is. God chose us before he made creation. And what did he purpose for us to be? That we should be holy. Before he made the world? Before. What was his purpose? We should be holy. Well, Pastor Dennis, holiness, being holy is just a lifestyle. It's more than a lifestyle. It's not only a lifestyle, it's a faith. And with that faith, you got to have a doctrine to teach you in order to be governed in that faith. That's right. Who taught us? Holy apostles. The Bible said he spake by his holy apostles. Give me the book of Peter. Now the book of First Peter. Let's see what the apostles holy or were they what these fellas call themselves apostolic. And look at the apostolic's day. Do you believe in divorce? Women preachers and little junior apostles and little junior mission. You got a little a little junior a little junior missionary group. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> a, a little junior missionary auxiliary. Junior. That's Big right. missionaries, junior missionaries. Hmm. Well, you can have that stuff that you call apostolic. I'm going to be holy. That's and it. I'm going to take holiness and take ap apostolic, and I'm going to smash it back to hell from where you come from. Amen. Think of it now. I'm not going behind your back to tell you. I'm telling you right to your Detroit, Michigan face. And I'm doing that. Oh, yes. There's not a church in the city that's called apostolic can get one scripture where Jesus or the apostles called themselves the same thing. That's right. Our faith is what the apostles had, the same faith. But the name of our faith is holy, holy faith. not apostolic. Holy faith. First Peter that's chapter 1. That's why you one. got so much mess in apostolic now. Gay men up in the pulpit. You look at these men in the so-called apostolic churches, they got more sugar in them than somebody got diabetes. Oh, yes. All these sissy acting men. Well, let the church say, man, I'm telling you right now, the Lord, the, so look at your neighbor next to you, look at your neighbor next to you and say, neighbor, your time is now. And look at your neighbor, turn to your right and say, neighbor, hallelujah, la shut they get in the spirit all sissified. Yeah. Halalasha. <laughs> Halalasha. <laughs> this is old fashioned holiness. Yes, it is. This modern stuff that came in church, we don't want it. Don't want it. We believe in old fashioned church. Old-fashioned church, our men didn't wear ponytails. No. You men, make up your mind. Either you're a man or a woman. Amen. Make up your mind. Imagine Pastor Jen is walking around with pink tails. 
a bang. Will got bangs. Oh Lord. You a man? Be a man. One scripture says, show yourself a man. Do it not even nature itself the teach Bible you. The Bible says in chapter 1 Corinthians, do it not nature itself teach you if a man have long it hair. It is a shame. Why you ain't got no shame? Go ahead. Ain't no man should have a bun. No man should have long hair. No man should have a ponytail. No. Not a man. No. Amen. Now you listen to the old troublemaker. Amen. All right, go back to where you were quickly. Now in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. That's what? But as he which hath called you is holy. Wait a minute. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. For as he which hath called you. That's God. Which hath called us. Is holy. God is holy. So be ye holy. Amen. So be ye apostolic. So be ye holy. How plain is this in your Bible? Yeah. Why are you so offended? Why the spirit don't move you now? Yeah. I'm in an apostolic church. I'm in a holy church. Holy. I take every so-called apostolic church and I challenge your bishop down to the door catcher. That's I, right. There's not a faith in the Bible called apostolic. No. Not one! Oh, no. You're just trying to bring something new. Holiness was here before I was born. Don't get mad at me. I didn't write this. That's right. It's in the Bible if you don't see me. What did it say? But as he which hath, which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. What did it say? Because it is written, it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. It is written. It's written. It is written. I don't blame you. Your bishop been having you professing a lie. Yeah. And you didn't ask no questions. Yeah. You went jumping and hollering and skipping. That's why you hear me over the air. Question your bishop. That's right. Question your bishop. That's right. Question your bishop. When he put that woman in the pulpit, knock on his office door. When that woman is up teaching what is supposed to be Bible class. Yeah. And yet you men sitting out there. Women up teaching Sunday school. And the Bible said I suffer not a woman to teach. Not a use of authority over the man. But to be in silence with all subjection. And you grown men let a woman teach you. Yeah. You are sinners. I suffer not a woman to teach. Give chapter and verse. First Timothy chapter 2 and we're at verse 12. Give chapter and verse. First Timothy chapter 2 and we're at verse 12. No, the book of Geno. First Timothy. First Geno. First Timothy. First Pastor Jen. First Timothy. First Pastor Jen Jen. First Timothy. I'm a, I don't care nothing about nobody's organization. All I care about is what God says. That's yeah. why a lot of bishops don't like me. Yeah. They can't stand me because we're like an unwanted beehive. God took this beehive out of the gospel and threw it in the church and everybody in the pulpit getting stung. <laughs> eh? They getting stung. Black preachers, white preachers, yellow. I don't care if you're so black. All I see is your eyes. If you're so white, you look like flower with a suit on. My Lord. I don't care. That's right. When it come down to that Bible, it's God's way or nobody's way. Amen. This is what everybody got to accept. Amen. It's God's way or everybody else's way is wrong. Hallelujah. God's way. Not Pastor Jennings' way. It's not Bishop Bonner's way. It's not Bishop S.C. Johnson's way. It's not Bishop Lawson's way. It's not P.A.W.'s way. It's Jehovah's way. And on highway. It's the way. way of the I am. Right. He said a highway. Show me there. Show me the glory to God. Show me there. And a way. And a way. And it shall be called. What did God say his way is called? The way of holiness. What did God say his way is called? The way of holiness. What did God say his way is called? The way of holiness. What you say now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You that are watching around the world, what you say? Amen. Highway. Your Highway. bishops can write me and cuss me out and leave me out. I ain't moving. No. I'm going to stick to what that Bible said. That's right. Everybody got to switch sides. That's right. You that is on the Lord's side, come to Bible. That's right. You that's on your bishop's side, stay in your organization. Yeah. And who you think going to win? <laughs> your bishop? Let's look at these organizations started by these men. They're all falling apart. Oh, yeah. 
The Bible said when the Lord do something, he do it forever. Nothing can be put to it. No anything taken away from it. That's right. God's word is supposed to rule church. Listen, when you buy a car, you got a GPS system, correct? A GPS system is used by those who are lost. Your scripture, your book of scripture, your word. That's your GPS system. It shows you what to do, what not to do, what to believe, what not to believe, how to wish up, how not to wish up. You need to stop just going along to get along because you're afraid to offend somebody and yet you sit in church and no things are wrong and you are not man enough to stand up but you are go home and cry on the shoulder go of ahead. your wife or call some other brother. Well, brother, what are we going to do? We know this is wrong. Stand up like a man. Go ahead. Your bishop hold you hostage and they keep you from standing up. He ordained you. Right, ready. He see you that you got questions, he makes you a deacon. He see you got questions, he makes you an elder. And then when he makes you an elder, right then you're like, oh, bishop. Huh. I never thought. You sure don't. <laughs> a lot of these men are ordained to keep you quiet. And a lot of these little weak, good for nothing bums that get in the pulpit too scared because they want to entertain the people. Yeah, That's why church has become entertainment and amusement. I had preachers tell me, Pastor Jennings, I want you to come preach, but I don't want you to bring no doctrine. I told them, you don't want me to come preach. That's right. The Bible said they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking the bread. We believe in the doctrine of the apostles because the doctrine of the apostles is the rules and regulations given to them from God to set order in the church. That's right. They don't want Doctrine in church. No. They want stuff that don't hurt you. Meat shack <laughs> and a shatterack <laughs> and a bendigo. <laughs> they was in the furnace. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> or they preach something that don't hurt you, like a song. Amazing grace. <laughs> How sweet the sound. <laughs> and then, and then, and then. A glory, glory, <laughs> hallelujah. He ain't preaching. Not preaching. Brother, when you're preaching, you're anointed under the inspiration of the Almighty to dive into that word, to take it apart, That's right. break it down so everyone that is lost can be found. That's it. And God can save them that are blind so they hallelujah. can sing out. Hallelujah. Preach the word. You hear what the Bible says? Preach the word. Listen at this. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and at verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, but get at verse 1. I charge thee. I charge thee. Before God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Before God. And the Lord Jesus and Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall judge the quick shall and judge the dead. quick and the dead. At his appearance. At his appearance. At his kingdom. What shall we do? Preach the word. Preach it. Preach the word. If you are ordained Hallelujah. minister, I don't care what title Hallelujah. you got, but if you are Scared to preach the word, preach the word because you scared to be thrown out of your organization. Hallelujah. You ain't fit to preach. That's right. Hallelujah. You claim you're an elder Hallelujah. and you scared to stand up for God. You ain't fit to preach. Amen. Hallelujah. You're a pastor and you scared to lose members. Hallelujah. You ain't fit to preach. Hallelujah. You a minister? Mm. And you scared to hurt the feelings of your son, your daughter, your wife? Hallelujah. Get out from the pulpit. Hallelujah. You ain't fit to preach. A man that God make a preacher, Hallelujah. he's owned by God. Hallelujah. God owns him. Preach it, brother. And I told you, glory to God. Hallelujah. God, I said, Hallelujah. he owns him. Hallelujah. He can't help himself. Bible said when Paul in the 16th chapter of Acts went among the Epicureans and the Stoics in Greece, he said, when I beheld their unlawful deed, he said how his spirit was aroused and stirred in him. Why a preacher? Why a preacher? 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 Why is it your spirit is only stirred when the church don't give enough money? Why is it the only thing stir up the preacher is dollars? Why is it that sin in your own house don't stir you up? Mm. You walk right by your daughter with a hot pants on. Let me tell you, preacher, something. If you can reprimand and chastise brothers and sisters in your congregation, but you can't say nothing to your own family who's living like the devil, then shut up. Yeah. The 
Bible said if you can't rule your own house, how, you how can you take care of the church of God's God. house? Them that sin rebuke before all. The Bible says what? In 1 Timothy 5 and at verse 20. You look at some of these. Sometimes a child go out, get pregnant. It can be the preacher's daughter. He won't say nothing. Your daughter get pregnant. He sit her down. You can't sit your own daughter down, don't bother nobody else's. That's right. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. You have no business having favoritism with your house. The Bible says he that have respect the person commits sin. I don't believe in favoritism with nobody. When it comes to that word of God, if I got to stand alone, Pastor Paul said, all, no man stood with me. He said, but God stood with me and strengthened me that by me, the preaching might be fully known. Brothers and sisters, you got to have a preacher. You got to have a leader who is connected with God more than anything in the world. Amen. These men are connected with money, fame, prosperity, and their little cheap, weak title. I'm, 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 I'm Reverend Devil. Reverend Devil. I'm, 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 I'm Bishop Lucifer. <laughs> I don't give two cents about your title. No, no. The Lord is coming. And the Bible says, nigga, we came into the world. Nigga, we shall return. There's nothing we can think of or nothing we have now that we're going to take with us to the grave. Sometimes you look at these bitches when they die. And they spend like $30,000, $50,000 for a casket. You know, and they do more for the bishop's death than they did with Jesus. I die, ain't no gla ain't a glass coffin for what? Mm. No glass coffin? Don't you, I, I, we, don't even, we don't even bury you in a suit. You don't, Pastor Jennings? Oh, no. We take your body and do with your body what they done with Jesus. We get linen and have it wrapped from head to toe and put you in the ground. Mm. If linen is good enough for the boss, which is Jesus, then it should be good enough for you. Look at the so-called apostolics now. The preachers and the ministers look like Catholics and archbishops. They got on all this red and white and little bean hats. Wait a minute. The Bible says in Leviticus 10.10. 10, let's read that. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter, chapter 10, 10 and verse 10. And verse 10. The Bible tells us put a difference. And that ye may put different. I had an old bishop contact me. who used to be on the bishop Lawson and talk to me. He's very up in age. He said, young man, I'm proud of you. He said, I never had the privilege to meet you. He said, I'm about 91 years old now. He said, I done seen a lot change through the years. He said, but I've never saw a man as young as you take such a stand in a day like today. He said, I sit home. I watch you on television. And every time I listen to you, he said, I got to a point, I keep a box of napkins. He said, because I'm always crying. He said, I can never think. He said, what has happened to the churches? He said, men that I came up with, the things they believe now, I'm embarrassed to tell people I even know them. If you've been in any church for a period of time, you've got to tell the truth. Have you not seen it change? Did it not arouse questions in yourself? Like, wait, wait a minute. What's going on? Is this, have you noticed something? Is everything that changed different from when it was when you was a kid? And have you noticed it didn't become more spiritual? It became more worldly? Things that Bishop used to preach against now, it's all over the church. Look at the different young men, how gay they are by the number. Gay acting deacons, gay, gay acting men is all on the choir, lips shining like they got armor all. <laughs> Practically every man on the choir. <laughs> Hands shaking like a woody woodpecker. Men can't even stand and walk like men. That's true. Apostolic! That's true. Men coming in churches running a week's revival. He act like a sissy. Let the church say amen. 
Let the church say amen again. I'm telling the Lord, he worked in mysterious ways. Like he directing traffic. I don't understand how people who've been had the Holy Ghost, as they say, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, have become so comfortable in this garbage. What that happened to your Holy Ghost? When you truly got the Holy Ghost, and when you're around something and you know it's wrong, the Holy Ghost in you troubles you. It troubles you. Am I right, I said? It troubles you to a degree you can't get comfortable. I don't care how much you try to get comfortable, you can't get comfortable. But when you see a church that rolls up the play like Israel did when Moses went on the mountain, and yet now you're playing with them, it shouldn't this stage. It's not for praise dancers. That's right. What kind of fool church you in? A bunch of young people getting up here. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. This is church. And Bishop is right along with him. I'm telling you, it's beautiful to see the young people. Praise the Lord. Your young people's having a party in church. Go ahead. You ain't praising no Lord. And that ye may put different. The Bible speaks plain. In Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Leviticus 10 and 10. And that ye may put different. Put a difference. Between holy and unholy. And between unclean and clean. Why is it that God's church is celebrating Christmas? Mm. The Bible ain't never said Jesus was born on the 25th of December, your Christmas Detroit liar. That's right. The Bible said, learn not the way of the heathen, heathen. you liar. That's right. Why you got a dirty old manger on your church lawn? Why you having Christmas plays? Why you having Easter plays? The Bible didn't say Jesus rose on Easter. The Bible ain't never taught me the 25 foot rabbit. If it is, kill him. You kill him and eat him. All, all these hungry people out here, chase that rabbit. Chase, him down. chase that rabbit down in the hood and kill him and eat him. Because I know there ain't no 25 foot rabbit gonna survive in Detroit. Not in Detroit. My God, he'll get a drive-by and be on a skillet so quick. Am I right, I say? Amen. Somebody be wearing that rabbit's fur. Glory <laughs> <laughs> to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Family, Hallelujah. many of these things that we are opening up and explaining, the preacher's honesty is challenged. Because every preacher that is watching and every preacher that is listening who've been preaching this stuff, you have to come before your congregation and repent and confess to them that all these years of garbage you got from cemetery school and you think you something because now you're called doctor and yet you can't perform surgery with the book but yet you call doctor. You got to repent for lying that there's five minor prophets and five major. You got to repent for lying that Paul died at Nero's chopping block. You got to repent for lying and saying in the, set, in the book of Acts of the Apostles there were seven deacons there. You got to repent for all those organizational lies. You got to repent for ordaining that woman. And let me say if I got any preachers in the house that are watching around the world because we're alive tonight internationally. If you claim you're a preacher and you've been ordained by a woman, you know more a preacher than I'm Bozo the Clown. That's right. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. God have never given the woman the authority to lay hands and ordain nobody a minister. No. Nobody. 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 Hear me now. Get what I'm telling you. Lord, thank God I want the rosha while I have you. Amen. What did he say? And that ye may put difference. Do you see what God want out of us? Put difference between holy and All unholy. right, Detroit. It's time to get on God's side. I had one person leave me out and say, why does he always talk about churches? I got to talk about religion. They say, well, why he don't talk about Jesus? When I talk about the truth, I'm talking about Jesus. Yeah? That's right. Truth is Jesus. That's right. Grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. Right. 
I got to let the world know that men went in religious business being sponsored by the devil. Lift but I want the world to know that this junk out here now, Jesus did not start it. Everything in Detroit and the world must repent of your sins and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And you must tarry until the Lord fill. Hallelujah. Who will take God? Say with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in another tongue that the Spirit of the living God give unto us. If you baptize Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you no more baptized than you were if Daddy Grace shot water on you. That's right. Last week in Chicago, I baptized a Mongolian pastor, a pastor from Mongolia. He said he never heard of the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ in his life, and he never heard it was one God. He said one day he was praying to God about something, and he went and put the question in the internet, see could he get the answer. And I came up, never heard of me in his life. He said when they saw me, he'd been hooked ever since. Came from Minnesota to Chicago, whipped down in water yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. Now, let me say to all the apostolics and Pentecostals and non-denominations. See, when you non-denomination, that means you nothing. I'm non-denomination. Ain't nothing. What are you? Nothing. I'm just non-denomination. Nothing. Most of the apostolics, do you know most of them baptized wrong? They baptized in Jesus' name. Someone said, that's why you're supposed to baptize Pastor Jenny. No, it's not. No. You got more than one Jesus in the Bible. Most of the, pre most of the preachers was baptized simply Jesus name. Most of the preachers preached to be baptized Jesus name. You got more than one Jesus. In Arabic, Jacob brothers Esau is pronounced Isa. And Isa in Arabic is Jesus. There are no J's in the Hebrew language. So Joshua will be pronounced Joshua, which is Jesus in English. Uh, Paul had a fellow laborer named Jesus Justice. There was a false prophet who named interpretation as Eliamis, who was named Bar Jesus. But there's only one Jesus Christ. So Peter on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem said, repent and be baptized. Every one, every of, one you of you in the name of Jesus Christ. But the apostle Paul used the term baptized Lord Jesus. So if you're not baptized Jesus Christ or the word Lord Jesus, you're not baptized right. If right. any of you been baptized simply in Jesus' name, you've been baptized wrong. Oh. Give me the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. And whatsoever ye do. Whatsoever. Whatsoever ye do. You that's out here now, them bow your head and raise your hand. Now listen, if you're from the hood in Detroit, you know anybody like this, something's going wrong. That's right. Huh? That's right. You know something, any time you're in this position, something is wrong. That ain't done right. Preacher said, bow your head. Raise your hand. You got a fake religion on your back. Amen. Huh? Amen. And you talking about you going to pray a sinner's prayer, you old liar. When did Jesus tell you pray a sinner's prayer? Amen. When did the apostles help? The, anybody hold the apostles' hand? <laughs> and repeat some sinner's prayers. Hey, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Wash me white as snow. Come into my old greasy heart and save me. And then the, the apostle said, all right, my friend, you saved. $20 in the brown envelope, please. <laughs> You're not saved. You're still a sinner. Right. Then other, others of you was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And you said you obeyed Jesus. No, you didn't. You did. Jesus said on the book of Matthew 28 and verse 28, 19. 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's why I'm here in Detroit. And that's what people need now more. You need teaching more than a choir. Yeah. People write me, Pastor Dennis, why your choir don't sing on your telecast? We, we got a whole lot of choirs. Tell the cats for preaching. <laughs> Amen. Don't need no more singing. When I open up with a song, that's enough. And sometimes I don't do that. That's true. That's, that's true. Folks need the word now. That's true. That's they need plenty of preaching. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they have a choir anniversary. A bunch of choirs getting up singing. Red lip women, earrings and finger rings and fake fingernails, mini skirts, breasts hanging out. Men look like women. Women look like men. Orange hair, green hair, ahead, blue man. hair, yellow hair, dyed hair. The pastor's wife is like a neighborhood hooker herself. Splits all in her clothes and she out here jumping, toenails all red. What happened to holiness? What happened to that holy lifestyle? Here you're supposed to be a preacher and your wife got her lips red like Jezebel and got somebody else's hair from India. Mm. Rings on every finger, ankle chain on your daughter. 
and she up on a choir, ankle chain on, something cut down in her hair, and marks on her neck, and she ain't married. And you're a bishop, sit down, you faker. You see, I can't preach for money if I try. Ain't nobody going to pay you for this. Nobody going to pay you for telling them like it is. People have asked me, aren't you scared someone going to kill you? No. I got to call the police here in Detroit, contact my secretary. And she called me Thursday night before I got here. That uh, somebody well, wanted to put a, like a hit out on me, was upset with me here in Detroit. They, they took the letter to the police department. And uh, you know, by law, the police hear that there's a threat on you, they got to notify you. Right here in Detroit. That made me feel so good. That's all the more reason for me to open up a church here. Amen. Yeah, that's all the more reason for me to open a church here. Yeah. Let the world understand. Pastor Jenny, don't fear nobody that ever fell from a woman's womb. Your umbilical cord was cut like mine. You had to get breastfed. You had to learn how to walk. Amen. You messed in your pampers. Somebody had to wipe your backside. You had to learn to get washed. They had to clean your navel. You had to grow up to a boy and to a man. And now you got to bow to the God that I preach about. So Pastor Jenny, don't fear nobody but God. And I mean nobody. But I care about somebody threatening me. Ain't the first time I've been threatened. I get threats from town to town, country to country, city to city. All these folks all around the world coming by hundreds. I mean by hundreds. Open up a church, Pastor Dennis. Open up a church, Pastor Dennis. I had one man say, Pastor Dennis, are you going to open up a church? I asked him, are you going to help me? He said, <laughs> My desire in Detroit is to open up a temple here. That's my desire. Hallelujah. I done got letters and letters from a whole lot of you down here. Black, white, brown, Hispanic, yellow, red, from so many races. Pastor Dennis, please open up the church. Open up the church. And that's the way it is. Everywhere I go, we can baptize by God's permission more people in one day than most men have baptized in 50 years. What everybody in Detroit got to do, son? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Yeah, man, Detroit. Glory to God. And this is for everything that them bow their head and raise their hands and claim you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you are saved. Someone say, Well, that's what the Bible said. They're not. The Bible said, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that he rose from the dead, it says you shall be. It didn't say you are. Shall be. Your lying pastor says you are. Bible didn't say you are. The Bible no. said you shall be. Shall be. Your lying pastor told you you are after you do it. But the Bible didn't say that. No. Let's read it for the edification of the church. Romans chapter 10. We're at verses 9 and 10. All right. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You've got to admit the Lord Jesus exists. And shalt believe in thine heart. You've got to believe in your heart. That God has raised him from the dead. And he rose again. Thou shalt be saved. No, you are. Thou shalt be saved. Well, shalt let me know you got more to do. More to do. Let me see you. Let me show you what else you got to do. 16th chapter of the book of Mark. Mark chapter 16 and at verse 16. I want, I want to give you a Bible salvation. Mm. All right. He that believeth. Uh-oh. He that believe. And is baptized. No, he that believe and bow the head and raise his hands. He that believeth and is baptized. He that believe and join the church. He that believeth and is baptized. False prophet come on and say, anybody want a church home? <laughs> anybody? And the choir starts singing. For you, I am praying. Right then, you convicted. You walk with the song. For you, I am And the, the preacher, like he's just selling a product. Come on right now. Come on right now, my friend. My friend, come on right now. Right now. God wants you right now. Come on and hold the preacher's hand. Come on and hold the preacher's hand. That's not even his real voice. That's not even that hypocrite's real. Come on right now. Right now, my friend. Come on. Right now. Why don't you talk with the voice that God gave you? Stop acting like something wrong with you. Go ahead, brother. I'm a very raw preacher. I'm a plain spokesman. I take all the fanciness out of men. That's right. Huh? That's right. I make everybody come on down to earth and be real. Amen. You know, it's like I came up in the hood. And when you come up in the hood, 
when you street fight, no fancy. No. You know? So coming up in the hood, you get one of them fellas who always want to be fancy. But then you get somebody who don't play. You all that. <laughs> Fella who don't play, he's stepping to you. And all that cute stuff you doing, yeah, come on, uh-huh. Uh, and all that, and you go swing on him, the fella from the hood, he timing you. Mm -hmm. mm. And next thing you know, you <laughs> knock you right off balance. Oh, and that's the way I am with the Bible. Oh, yeah. I got the Old Testament and the New Testament, and I'm coming right to you. Huh? Oh, yeah. All of that. Bow your head, raise your hand, accept Christ. I, I, I'm coming to you. Repent and baptize. I'm putting it right to you. Hallelujah. Nothing fancy. Just plain. Be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Christ. For all of you that would bow your head and raise your hands and thought you accept Christ and was baptized Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost when Jesus said, do it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband. But if I tell you to do something in my name, you're going to say Jennings. You ain't going to say Father, Son, and Husband. Jesus said, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So Matthew 28, 19 was fulfilled in Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Detroit, it's time to obey God now. Repent. And be baptized. How? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I got every pastor, every deacon, every so-called missionary, every human in Detroit and the world, yes. every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. Remission means removing. That's how you get your sins washed away and what did God promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Anybody Holy Ghost. Anybody want to obey God and be baptized the right way in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Come on, Detroit. Glory to God. All of you that are standing, you see them brothers back there? All of you that are standing, go on to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back and get ready to get yourself right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bible says he added daily, daily such as should be saved. All of you that are standing, Hallelujah. you got to get it Hallelujah. the right way. I want the world to see it. Do the world see this? I want the world to see it. Repent! Repent and be better. Repent! Repent! Everybody got to get baptized the right way in order to go back with God. Huh? Hallelujah! Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah! You must do it! Hallelujah! Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born of the water and of the spirit, you can't get in. Do you see all this? This is the Lord's doing. Everybody that's not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you are sinner as we speak. If you don't get it tonight, come on back tomorrow. Don't you go to your fake church tomorrow. Don't you step a half inch in your church. Who? None of you. Amen. Remember, you're the host, I'm the guest. You come on back tomorrow and hang out with Pastor Jennings so we can hang and bang with God's everlasting word. Think of it. Here's just last week in Chicago, 80 went down in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, the first night, 48 went down. The first night. If you've been sprinkled in the Catholic church, you better off getting in your shower and pull the curtain. You no more baptized than I can tap dance like Fred Astaire, Bojangles, and moonwalk like Michael Jackson and scream like James Brown. Amen. And I can't do none of the above. Everybody got to come on and repent and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ in order to get this thing right. The Lord our God of heaven and earth is coming. And the, you know, the preacher said he's coming looking for a church. He didn't lose it. He ain't looking for nothing. He's coming for the same thing he left here. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God preserve you. Let us all stand. Come on back tomorrow. We're going to close out with prayer. Come on back tomorrow at 11 o'clock and hear the gospel of holiness again. Yeah.
eternal, everlasting God in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. Glory to God for your word and for the gospel that continue to be preached. Hallelujah. My God for men and women are surrendering and giving up everywhere that this word is being taken. As you said in your word to your servant that you will give him all the land where the sole of his feet may trod. Look upon them that's going down in water. My God, fill them with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Bless Detroit. Bless the work here in Detroit that we're venturing out to do. Give us victory on every hand. Make provisions for us. Provide us with the desires of our heart according to your riches and glory. Protect us as we go back to our separate places. These blessings we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the most high God in every heart. Say amen. All right, come on back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. God bless you.